Good morning and welcome to Crossroads with George Kabor. The sky is overcast, but we praise the Lord. The scriptures teach us from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Hallelujah. Morning, Victor. Good to see you. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Hi, J.C. Mozo. I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. It's such a pleasure to have friends from around the world joining in and worshiping and studying God's word together. Hi, Asha. Jama Siki. So good to see each and every one of you. The sky is overcast. Let's pray it doesn't rain while I'm speaking. The Lord is on the throne and his mercies endure forever. Let's begin our time of study together by invoking the Holy Spirit and asking the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and our minds. Hi, Nick, and hi, Carol. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your constant care, and we thank you that you have rescued us through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who encourages, builds, and strengthens us. Holy Spirit of God, fall afresh upon us even as we study about your nature, your activity, and your part in the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for your word. Teach us your word that we might walk in the light of your word. For we pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. We are continuing our exploration of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and so, as we come together, we are seeking God's presence and God's will. Paul writes to the church at Corinth, Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Morning, Alex. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Praise the Lord. You know, my brothers and sisters, as we approach God's Word, we come with reverence, with a teachable and open heart. And we recognize that God's word is like a double-edged sword. 
and we pray that God's word would speak to us, encourage us, strengthen us, and build us. It's fascinating that when we read Paul's letters, all his letters, you see that he's always sending a greeting where he presents his credentials as an apostle of Christ. He's introducing himself and he's telling you why you must pay attention to what he's saying. Part of the reason is that Paul was not one of the twelve chosen by Jesus when he was on earth. But in fact, Paul was chosen after Jesus rose from the grave and ascended into heaven. So of course, many people would contest and question Paul's authority and credentials. Secondly, Paul being an apostle for the Gentiles is challenging the Orthodox Jews that when God calls people from around the world, and particularly Gentiles, they do not have to be Jews first, but that it is possible for pagans or Gentiles or heathens, which are all antiquated words, can connect direct with God. That is one of the most wonderful things that we can put our faith and trust in. God can connect direct with any one of us. So my prayer is that the Lord will speak to us today through Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church in chapter 3. We're going to focus on verses 1 to 6. <clears throat> Paul writing to the Corinthian church says, you know, do we really need to present our credentials to you? Are we unknown? Do you expect us to tell us, tell you what our credentials are? Do you not accept that it is God who called us? It is we speak in the name of Jesus Christ. So he says, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? Paul says to them, you yourselves are our letter of recommendation written on our hearts. My brothers and sisters, as a result of my work amongst you, as a result of my knowing you, as a result of my building and sharing and encouraging and challenging you, you are a living faith community and you are my credential as a church. You yourselves are a letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and read by all. Amazing. Paul has so much confidence in his level of en engagement with the Corinthian church. He has written several letters to them. He has visited them. He has taught them. He has guided them. And he says that I know that God is at work in you and it is your life and testimony even though you live in this very progressive society and I've had to correct you on a number of occasions on a number of issues, you remain a faithful community. And of course, like all churches, we have our issues, our problems, and our uh, dilemmas. But that doesn't mean that God has abandoned you or me. God accepts you as his children. You know, even when we go astray, God does not abandon us. 
he, for the sake of his honor, for the sake of his reputation, for the sake of his nature and personality, he is faithful. And so God cares intimately for you. He longs for you and me to come back to him and to live in the center of his will. But Paul wants to help them understand their status as the children of God. And you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. He says this is not a legal issue. This is a relational issue. This is a God issue because your status is not as a result of jumping through various hoops, qualifying, and then being accepted. You have been unconditionally accepted by God through his son, our Lord Jesus. And there's a huge difference between citizenship as a result of paying for it or qualifying for it, whereas while we were still unqualified, God blessed and encouraged us. And so he has made us his children. And so this notion, written not with ink, is stating the obvious. This is not as a result of some legal acceptance, but with the imprimatur of the spirit of the living God. The stamp of the living God is upon each one of you, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of our hearts. The point being that when we are given credentials on stone, it's like a legal document. It's an external objective reality. Whereas when it is inscribed on our hearts, it is about God teaching us and blessing us and guiding us so that it is springing from a relationship of faith. Our credentials are given to us by the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and by the exercise of faith on our part in receiving it and living according to this new realization. Hi, Karun and Hi, Mina. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God. He said, because of this reality of the Holy Spirit confirming and authenticating what Christ has done on the cross for us, we have a living faith, a living confidence. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. We, of course, know that this is not a result of our human efforts or our own achievement. We have been taught in scriptures not to trust in our own abilities or in our own strength. But our trust is in God. We are called not to lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge him, to recognize him, to prioritize him, and to give him the honor and the worship that belongs to him and to him alone. And so, my brothers and sisters, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are being drawn to him. Praise God. Our confidence, our sufficiency, our relationship comes because of who God is. Thank you, Karun. And so I pray that God will help you to think you know, when we become disciples, we don't leave our brains outside. 
but we recognize the human brain is finite, our human reasoning is limited. And therefore, as God's children, we seek God's enabling grace by the transforming of our minds through the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit transforms our mind, ignites our faith, so that we live by faith and live in the power of the Holy Spirit. So our sufficiency is not in our human strength, but our sufficiency, our confidence comes from having a living relationship with God. And as a result of this living relationship, verse 6, God has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. So, my brothers and sisters, don't hanker after the old covenant, the old agreement that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Through the work of Jesus Christ, he has established a new covenant with you and with me. And that is why we are servants or ministers of this new covenant which operates in the Spirit and released and accessed by our faith. So it's not by might, not by works, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Praise God. And now he emphasizes the difference between the law and the spirit. Not of the letter, not of the law, but of the spirit. Why? Because the law or the letter only kills. It makes you feel guilty. But the spirit gives life. Praise God. So my brothers and sisters... As we continue to explore the work and identity of the Holy Spirit, today we recognize that it is the Spirit that gives us life. It is the Spirit that encourages and builds us. So may God guide, lead, and bless us that we may walk in His ways. I pray that the Spirit of God will be given his due. The Spirit of God will be received and that we would connect direct and walk in the ways of the Spirit. Why? Because the letter kills but the Spirit gives life. Irony We've been looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And the focus has been on 2 Corinthians chapter 3, where Paul writes, It is the letter that kills, but it is the spirit that gives life, in verse 6. So, I want us to invite the Spirit of God to have free access in all our lives. Breathe on me, breath of God, is the song that I want to sing this morning. Breathe on me, breath of God. Yes, God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou wouldst do. You. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee 
I will, one will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God. Blend all my soul with thine until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Father, we thank you that you love us and you care for us. Enrich our understanding of you. Bless and guide each one of us, I pray. Help us to live a life that is pleasing in your sight. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. God be with you. God bless you. Be blessed. Stay blessed. And remember, you and I are called to be a blessing to others. See you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.